that providing a conducive environment for local businesses that get affected by the floods in the community. That for a ward and area and economy to prosper, we need a clean, green and safe environment. We want to protect our business owners, our homeowners. We don't want their houses to be flooded. So that's why you can see that we're taking time to clean out drainages. We're taking time to clean out the streets of China. We also want to be able to attract, uh, uh, you know, attract uh, different types of investment, just so that this place is, is, is conducive for business, is conducive for entrepreneurship, and is conducive for all forms of creativity. So we're obviously just calling on board as area councillor, we're calling on board uh, different cooperating partners to join hands with us and make China beautiful. Uh, we want to plant trees as well as part of the Keep China Clean project. Mr. Nsam has also revealed that the project will be extended to nearby communities such as Miniwood, Havondale and Salama Park. Keep China Clean project is not just limited to China compound. We're covering parts of Salama Park and Avondale as well, and uh, even potentially parts of Meanwood. Yeah, so it's actually an ongoing program, but in the long term, what we're looking to have in place is we want to have public bins in place uh, for the drainages. We want to have culverts so that they're, they're, they're not always being contaminated and having waste thrown in there. And then um, I think for now it's a continuous project because um, the, the performance contractors have been given a three-year contract. So ideally, the streets and the drainages are supposed to be clean at all times so this initiative has come with the full support from the community special like uh, this lens season uh, we need more help kutandizi wa maningi pari project especially mkatu there is some places mwameni mansi ya kwanza kuyeni so funika artist kankala kuna company ya inga tanze kutupangila kuma drainage system so that manzi has yende as kumana na ya mameni drainage nishi wenga tandize munga kuno kushayende to the previous councillor there is a total difference. So this time at least there is a cleanliness. This project we really support it. Even you have seen the youths who are coming here. They are just volunteers. Uh, we are working as a team. The project is funded by the council while the human resource is on volunteer basis. Alex Shimba, Kabne News in Lusaka. John Howard Market in Lusaka's Chawama constituency, which was constructed using Constituency Development Fund CDF 10 years ago, has remained a white elephant as traders opt to conduct business outside the market. John Howard Market's secretary has challenged the traders operating from outside the market, whose construction completion dragged for many years to consider occupying the spaces provided inside the market. In an interview with Kamla TV News, Stanley Ianda says the traders should understand that the 500 kwacha they are meant to pay is for offer letters and note that they will be mandated to pay the amount monthly. More in the following report. Traders at John Howard Market have repeatedly made calls on the need to construct a modern market in the area. That some people even started to use the empty stands in the deplorable market shelter to answer the call of nature another situation they feared might result in waterborne diseases. Now, despite Lusaka City Council having handed over 50 shops and stands at John Howard Market in Chawama constituency on the 18th of December 2021, traders at John Howard have refused to occupy the new modern market constructed due to a number of reasons. Kamne TV caught up with the market secretary who challenged the traders to use the market. So, for the shops, we are asked to pay 500 kwacha for the offer letters. So those who have paid have already started operating in the new shops. And for the tables, there are 32 tables. They are asked to pay a 50 kwacha and a 50 kwacha of the market. And out of these 32 stands which you are seeing here, 18 has already been taken. But people are resisting to enter the market. They are saying, no, in the market, we are not able to be seen. And we, when we heard this complaint, when we heard the complaint, we had opened that gate and seen that vehicle being packed for them to be seen, to be visible. He disclosed to this reporter that everything has been put in place for traders to operate within the market. What's that uh, talking of? They are not supposed to pay 500, neither, or 100 quarts. That one is to you, for you to acquire a stand. When you acquire a stand, you start paying two, and two quarts per day as levy, and 10 quarts per week. And those who are who own shops, it's only 500 quarts to get the offer letter. Maybe I don't know where they got that information that they have to be paying 500, 500. It's not there. 
Blessings Chakwila, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Economic and Equity Party leader Chilufia Tayali has held the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, for not allowing fresh nominations following the withdrawal of United Progressive Party candidate Francis Livanda from the race. Mr. Tayali tells Kamnet News that it would have been a cost to the nation if ECZ had called for fresh nominations. Meanwhile, Mr. Tayali, who was campaigning in Jack Compound, is confident of scooping the Kawata seat. More in the following report. With only 13 days left to the Kawata parliamentary by-election polls, door-to-door -door campaigns by various candidates have strengthened with each assuring the people of Kawata constituency of massive development once voted for. On the other side, debates have been raised by different stakeholders with regard to the move made by the Electoral Commission of Zambia to proceed with the Kawata parliamentary by elections and not to call for fresh nomination despite the withdrawal by one of the candidates, Francis Libanda, from the United Progressive Party, with some claiming the move by the commission is illegal. With the withdrawal of Mr. Libanda from the parliamentary race, evokes the provision of Article 52.6, which guides as where a candidate dies, withdraw or become disqualified in accordance with Article 70, 100 or 153, or court disqualifies a candidate for corruption or malpractices after the close of nomination and before the election date, ECZ shall cancel the election and require the filing of fresh nominations. Economic and Equity Party leader Chilfia Tali, however, recommends the ECZ for the action taken. To vote on, on the 20th, and then they change because of one man and he's not even giving a good reason in the case of death, at least maybe you can even understand, not whereby somebody realizes that I'm not going to win this election, then you pull back because you are, you are scared of the embarrassment that you are going to have as a result of your loss. That is irresponsible. That is irresponsible. And talk about us. We also paid fresh nominations means we have to pay 15,000 kwacha again. Surely ECZ, um, I am praying that they will not entertain this uh, nonsensical withdrawal, but they will go ahead with the elections. I think this is the most reasonable thing to do. And by the way, those who are saying, no, the law, the law, the law is made for people. You can't just say, no, the law, the law, when you can clearly see that it is messing you up because of an irresponsibility of one person. Then you go and uh, hang on to the law to say, no, the law, the law. No, talk about the irresponsibility of this person. Don't talk about the law. Mr. Tali, who held a door-to-door -door campaign Sunday requesting Jack Compound residents in Lusaka to turn out in large numbers and vote for him, says he's very confident of winning the seat and representing the people of Kawata constituency. Give President Hakainde Ichilema this credit that for the first time we are having a by-election and we are able to campaign freely as you have seen me doing. This was not possible. Uh, with this environment that they have created, I think it has given opportunity for all candidates to sell themselves. And from my point of view, I think I come out as a front runner in the, in the sense that Kawata constituency is full of people who are on social media and I have a footprint on social media. So already that has given me an advantage. And um, going around campaigning, talking to people, has given me a clear, a clear win, this one, before even 20th comes. I'm very sure I'm winning it because, um, because of my social media presence, the message that I'm giving out to the people. The Kawata by-election, which is scheduled for the 20th of January 2022, comes after the tragic death of the UPND Kawata Member of Parliament, Levim Kandawire, who was hit by a car in November last year. Miriam Kemba. Reporting for Kamni TV News. Political analyst and historian from the University of Zambia, Professor Bizek Piri, says intra-party wrangles are a recipe for political suicide, which political parties must endeavor to avoid to remain relevant. He says a political party that is having internal fights cannot compete effectively in an election. Professor Piri regrets that the Democratic Party 
could not contest in the Kabata constituency by election slated for 20th January due to leadership wrangles. The Unza lecturer has observed that the personalization of political parties is contributing to intra-party wrangles as people feel entitled to positions in the party, a situation he described as unfortunate. He adds that the failure by political parties to conduct fair and free internal elections has contributed to internal wrangles. What we saw of a political party failing to lodge in their nomination because two people show up, I, think, I don't think that is the best way. That in itself indicates that the party itself has not undergone a democratic process of arriving as to who is going to represent the, part, uh, the party in that context against other political parties. So my view and my advice to political parties, all political parties, is that they should start with democratic dispensation within their own political party. When people have been elected, let them be supported. People should not be contesting that no, it can't be that one, it must be me. That way, that's why we see these wrangles uh, going on and on. And I hope that uh, politicians will learn to be humble. Because to be a leader, you need to be humble. If you are not uh, humble, then you cannot represent others properly. So that's what I can say about the, these political leaders. They need to be humble, first and foremost, and respect those that have been elected to avoid the splits because when a political party is has a split that is sure way that they will not make it when they are competing against other political parties shuangandu constituency member of parliament stephen kampiongo has charged that the opposition patriotic front is not regretting failing to strike a deal with the international monetary fund imf when it was in government in an interview, Mr. Kampiongo says if the PF wanted to ignore the needs of the vulnerable in society, they would have secured the IMF package, which comes with harsh conditions that have a serious impact on citizens. He says PF is a pro-poor party whose interest is to save the vulnerable people in society and not seek to govern for selfish reasons. More in this report. Between 2016 and 2018, at the time the opposition Patriotic Front Party was in power, Zambia failed to secure a bailout package despite having open discussion and making progress with the International Monetary Fund. But just a few months in power, the United Party for National Development Administration has managed to strike a deal with the IMF. The opposition Patriotic Front Party says it does not regret missing a chance to strike a deal with the IMF when it was in government. Shiwangandu constituency member of parliament Stephen Kampiongo says the PF is a pro-poor party and could not ignore the Zambian citizens by going ahead with the deal. We don't regret, you know, having um, missed the opportunity to strike uh, a deal with IMF. Why? Because as a party in the government then, we are a pro-poor party, we are a social democrat party. So everything that we were deciding on we had people behind, those of the lowest, the poorest. And so what was sticking were the conditions that were to come with that deal. That was a challenge we had, to strike a balance between our ideologies of um, you know, supporting the poor, the issue of fuel. And I was, uh, I, I, I'm speaking to this because these were the sticking points, the cost of fuel, the cost of inputs, the farm support inputs, which um, uh, we all know. And obviously the third one was about the bloated um, uh, government expenditure. We were alive to the impact that some of these conditions were going to come with. Mr. Kampiongo also says the 12% salary increment is nothing compared to the suffering the Zambians are facing. And the third issue actually was also the issue of cost of uh, energy, power, you know. Yes, indeed, power is generated at the cost, but if you are going to, to sell it at the, the, the prices beyond the affordability of many Zambians, what do you achieve? So people have laughed at us that we were importing power at uh, a higher rate in terms of kilowatts and selling slightly cheaper. What choice did we have? We were thinking of the people. 
how much do you get yourself? You know, in, in, the, in the media sector there where you are. So where, every time we were looking at these issues, we had to think of everyone. Just look at today. You have increased, I think, the salaries of the public worker. When we came as PF, when we said more money in people's pockets, the increment was uh, about 100%. That's the time we saw public workers start buying vehicles. Now you have got this 12% increase. You've got electricity increased. You've got fuel increased. What, what, what's the value of that increment? Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Social scientist Innocent Kolala says Zambians need to adopt coping mechanisms in the wake of the high cost of living. Mr. Kolala says there is need to cushion the workers and citizens in the wake of the cost of living, which is already beyond the reach of many Zambians, at over 8,000 kwacha for a family of five, according to the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection, JCTR Basic Needs and Nutrition Basket. Speaking to Cabinet TV News, Mr. Kolala says government has already taken a stance on some policies such as the removal of fuel subsidies and the pending hike in the cost of electricity, hence the need to find a means of surviving. Zambia increased the price of fuel after removing subsidies on petroleum products to reflect the correct price of the commodity. With Zambia implementing an International Monetary Fund IMF package, the country may be in a situation where a number of subsidies are removed, hence people need to brace themselves for tougher times ahead with an upward adjustment in the price of electricity in the context of cost-reflective tariffs pending approval. Social scientist Innocent Kolala says as prices of commodities continue to escalate, there is a need to put in place coping mechanisms. In the government circles, they, they, they signed the collective agreement uh, with, the, of course, its employer, which is the government, of about 12% salary uh, upward adjustment, as well as uh, the 15% transport uh, allowance. Of course, it may be a drop in the ocean based on the fact that I think now a lot of things are going to, uh, to escalate due to the removal of subsidy on such commodities like fuel, which propels the, the, the economy of this country. But I think it is uh, a good direction uh, which has been taken, which we are also appealing to other sectors, the private sectors, to, uh, to emulate what the government has done. He adds that there's a need for employers to respond by improving the welfare of workers in the country. Because it is the same shop right which the public servants will be going to, even these other private workers, the employees will be going to. It's the same, um, the same shops which other in, uh, employees will be going to. It's similarly, even for those from the private, they'll be going to. So we are appealing to all sectors of this country to ensure that they consider its employees. And moreover, if you haven't taken care of your employee, how do you expect them to propel in terms of advancing the development of uh, or production of your, your, your uh, your institution. So we need to ensure that we, we, we do all these things side by side. The government, it has demonstrated by increasing the salaries and the transport allowance to its employees. Similarly, we are expecting that the private sector also respond by ensuring that they also increase the salaries to its employees. Patrick Soko, Kamne News, in Lusaka. Leader of the opposition in Parliament, Brian Mundubile, has castigated the non-state actors advocating for a referendum on the Bill of Rights, saying they contributed to a failed referendum to adopt the document in 2016. In an interview, Mr. Mundubile says it is shocking that the same people who contributed to the failure to adopt the Bill of Rights are rising to make demands on the same matter. He has since urged organizations advocating for a referendum to convince the people why they feel it will pass this time around. More in this report. 2016, Zambians voted in and rejected a referendum on changes to the Bill of Rights in the country's constitution. The constitutional referendum was held alongside polls to elect country's president, members of parliament, mayors and councillors. However, the referendum had failed to reach the threshold of 50% of eligible voters required for the result to be valid. A number of governance experts attributed the defeat of the referendum to a variety of factors, 
including the timing of the referendum, the controversy surrounding the reform process, and the lack of public education, among others. Recently, a number of key stakeholders have taken interest in advocating for re-attempt by calling for another referendum in 2022, among them being the GEARS Initiative, the most recent, the non-governmental organization Gender Coordinating Council, NGOCC. These are the gaps in the amended constitution of 2016. We continue to appeal to the new Dawn administration to facilitate for a national referendum for inclusion of the expanded Bill of Rights in the new constitution that will guarantee social economic rights of citizens. But to leader of the opposition in parliament, Brian Mondovile, the referendum cannot go through given that nothing significant has changed between then and now. Well, first of all, um, when you talk about progress, whether it's in constitutional reform uh, or any uh, other form of development, you have to be simply going forward. Uh, we've had attempts at uh, uh, the constitutional reforms, including a referendum in 2016. Uh, bill 10, uh, which was um, a constitutional amendment bill uh, number 10 of 2019. Uh, these were attempts to uh, 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 reform or amend the constitution, and both failed. Okay? So if there are those that have come up now and they would want to uh, institute fresh reforms, the question maybe to ask them is what has changed. Uh, they've got to explain to the Zambian people what has fundamentally changed within our environment, within our country, in order to see these uh, reforms succeed. In an interview, Mr. Mondovilla has alleged that some NGOs advocating for a referendum contributed to the failure of a referendum in 2016 and is shocked that the same are rising to advocate for a referendum and constitutional reforms now. Uh, these are some of the organizations that went out to campaign against these reforms. Uh, they went to campaign against the uh, uh, constitutional reforms, saying that the current constitution is, uh, is good enough in its current state. So if they're going to come up uh, to say they want uh, reforms, I think they owe it to the Zambian people. They have a duty to the Zambian people to explain, first of all, why they had objected uh, to these reforms in the first place and what has fundamentally changed now for them to think that this is succeed. I think that is the way forward so that we make progress. Otherwise, it will be a circus. You know, you, you say no to something today without any, giving any reason. The following day you want to, to say yes to it. Yeah, that's taking the Zambian people for granted. Yeah, I think for once we want to call upon NGOs and other citizens alike uh, just to respect the Zambian people. Uh, when we are representing the interests of the Zambian people, we must be sincere. We must do that uh, with sincerity so that when we say this is good for the Zambian people, we mean what we say. Alex Shimba, Kamne News, in Lusaka. The cost of water is expected to go up as the New Dawn government is in the process of making water supply and sanitation tariffs cost reflective. Water Development Permanent Secretary Joe Kalusa says the water utility companies are incurring huge costs for treating raw water into clean and safe water as sewer waste. Mr. Kalusa said the companies are working with tariffs which were last adjusted between 2017 and 2019 and yet the utility cost structure for their operation is not the same. This was when Mr. Kalusa visited Nkana Water Supply and Sanitation Company on his continued familiarization tour of commercial utilities on the Copper Belt. Meanwhile, Mr. Kalusa has urged Nkana Water Supply and Sanitation Company to quantify government debt and ensure that it follows up on payments because every department has a budgetary allocation for water supply and sanitation. Meanwhile, speaking during the same presentation, Nwasko Senior Inspector Technical Kasenga Hara explained that utility companies need to meet all the stipulated benchmarks in their operations before applying for a tariff increment. I requested that give us all those uh, bills and specify the ministries who are seated on these bills because the Treasury assured me that they want to get that money direct from their budgets before the budgets, before the money is released. They were looking forward to just getting that chunk in advance for us and give us. But the other thing also, let's try to see on how we can engage our government ministries uh, vigorously to ensure that they pay uh, these water bills. I'll give you an example. You never go to a government institution, hospital, school, and find that they've run out of ZESCO units. It's not possible. Okay, you never see their vehicles parked 
that there is no fuel. It's not possible. You will never see them uh, not using stationery, that they failed to buy stationery. It's not possible. We face challenges where people just begin building, and some cases they have already taken up and they have documents sometimes. Yes, yes, yes. So it's quite uh, surprising and this is a matter that also we are pursuing. So we are actively pursuing our title and we are making progress in that area as well. The other major issue I thought of highlighting is our daily water demand. We you know our company service areas uh, has outstripped our current installed capacities, so we actually have a deficit of 25,000 cubic meters of water per day. And as a result, in trying to service all these areas, we end up with reduced hours of supply because we, we have to ensure more people get this water. In another development, the National Water Supply and Sanitation Council, NWASCO, has implored water utility companies to continue improving water quality for the well-being of consumers. Wasco Chief Inspector Peter Mutale says water quality is vital because it guarantees consumer safety by ensuring good health. He says water supply, quali water quality is something the water regulator takes seriously because the commodity is consumed by many people. More in this report. Water quality can be thought of as a measure of suitability of water for a particular use based on selected physical and biological characteristics. Clean, safe drinking water is an essential life support component. Hence, it is for this reason that consumers are usually particular about water quality, considering that even bottled water has presented safety issues. I've just discovered, say, one of the water is, is indeed uh, contaminated. Uh, contaminated. Why I'm saying I'm saying this because you can you can't really understand what is inside this uh, this this bottle and as you can see the water is sealed but now there are a lot of deaths like uh, also something like matuvi and other black things which I, I I can't really understand. Under the supervision of the National Water Supply and Sanitation Council, Nuasco, water utility companies continue to make efforts to improve water quality as stated by the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Company. This plant provides, I think, gives about, uh, supplies about, is it 42, about 42, 43 uh, percent of the total water supply for the city. So anything that goes wrong with this, this plant really affects the, the, the water supply in Osaka. Also in terms of the quality of water that we produce from here. The quality of water we produce from here is actually a meets a international uh, and the WHO guidelines. Meanwhile, according to the NUASCO, 2020 water and sanitation urban and peri-urban water supply and sanitation sector report, Western and Luapula water and sanitation companies scored one point reflecting waste than relevant average and the benchmark was not achieved. Lusaka, Malonga and Chambeshi water and sanitation companies scored two points indicating better than relevant average but the benchmark was not achieved. Meanwhile, Northern, Kafuvu, Lukanga, Southern, Northwestern and Eastern water and sanitation companies scored three points which is said to be acceptable and the benchmark was achieved. Minister of Water and Sanitation, Mike Imposha, recently underscored the need for water firms to improve water quality. We must be on top of things in terms, as a, in terms of as a ministry, but also our utility companies to ensure that in the midst of these challenges, we should improve the treatment of water, but we should also improve the supply of water. I also spoke to Mwasko Chief Inspector, Peter Mutari. So safety actually of water comes first, even before we talk about cleanliness. Because cleanliness talks about the effective value of water. You know, when the water is looking not good, even if it's safe, somebody not drink it because the, because the eyes is telling you that it's not okay. Yeah. So the, the issue of safety of water, even WHO insists on safety. Yeah. So it's always good when you're talking about the uh, quality of water, say clean and safe. So that both uh, are taken into account. So even for us as, as a regulator, what we want to attend on the day is to make sure that water is clean and also safe. So we have issued the, the water quality monitoring guideline, and this guideline actually has been enforced since 2002. But we keep revising it to incorporate new things that are coming on board. Patrick Soko, Cabinet News in Lusaka. 
a senior citizen who is also a freedom fighter in Chipata district of Eastern Province, has appealed to the new Don government to fulfill its promises to the Zambian people now that it is implementing its budget. Speaking to Kamla TV News in Chipata district of the Eastern Province, a freedom fighter, Neva Pakapaka, says the new Don government must focus on empowering the Zambian youths who turned out in large numbers to vote for change on August 12, 2021. Meanwhile, a youth activist in Chipata district of the Eastern Province has urged the government not to entertain corrupt individuals in decision-making positions. Speaking to Kamla TV News in Chipata, Patrick Musanya is disappointed that the previous regime failed to combat corruption. The expectations of the youths in regard to what actually are supposed to have in as much as we look at unemployment, empowerment, and uh, more especially the participation of the youths, I believe uh, it has now been uh, aware that uh, the government having been put in power in a way that there was this uh, landslide victory for the UPN, UPND. It is now an issue that we should expect as what has been already ex uh, promised that the youths and uh, the rest of the other people who have the empowerment, particularly in terms of implementing the 2022 budget which is now supposed to be implemented. So we are expecting, okay, the youth are very expecting. So I would like to advise the new Don government to have zero tolerance towards corruption. So like we used to see ministers in the previous government go to court as ministers. That really gave them a, an fair advantage when the judges were rendering judgment. So going forward, if a minister or any other public officer is as at corruption cases, let them be dropped for the moment and pave way for investigation. Then if they are cleared by the courts of law, let them continue serving in their position. This is Kamla TV and not just another channel. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more news after the break. Deborah. Have you connected to the Wi-Fi on the bus? It's fast, it's amazing. I've just downloaded my books and I'm about to complete the series. It's nice to me. Ah, no, I'm actually watching a reality show. He's about to propose. Oh, so sweet. Make your trip seem short yet comfortable and safe when you use the UBZ luxurious fully air-conditioned coaches that come fitted with amazing onboard entertainment, passenger information services, coffee making facilities and fridge for your hot and cold beverages, free and interrupted Wi-Fi for your gadgets, phone charging facilities, comfortable seats that recline to offer extra resting posture, safety seat belts, adjustable reading lights for each traveling client and of course clean flushing toilets for your convenience. So travel in luxury and safety with UBZ luxurious coaches. UBZ will always take you there. It's your time to get to Groove and step back to school in 2022 in magnificent style. Hurry to your nearest butter store anywhere in Zambia and get a free spiral notebook for every pair of butter school shoes you purchase. Promotion runs until the 31st of January 2022. Hurry while stocks last. T's and C's apply. Love and the business looks very positive and it looks like we'll be able to launch the machine. She has so much data. Mom. Yes, baby. It says here, mm -hmm. global warming and climate change mm -hmm. is caused by the pollution from careless activities of human beings. Wow. Son, do you know I can turn my phone into a TV remote? How is that possible? It's so easy. Check this out. Be smart, be fast with Mega Data from Zamtel. Get your 15 GB mobile data for only 100 kwacha, 30 GB mobile data for only 200 kwacha, and your 70 GB LTE data bundle with free Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp. Visit our Facebook page, website, or service centers countrywide for more information. Zamtel, your digital lifestyle partner. 
Hi there, SGK Properties wants to remind you that there will be life after the festivities. That's why we are here right now presenting you an opportunity to invest in what will literally last you a lifetime. We have various plot sizes in Kabangwe area just 6.7 kilometers from 6 miles roundabout. Plot sizes range from 20 by 20s, 25 by 20s, 30 by 20s, 35 by 20s, 40 by 20s, 40 by 23s and 40 by 35s. We also have one acre plot located in Lusaka West, 22 kilometers from Lumumba Road on Mongwe Road, going for 180,000 kwacha. Remember, the option to have your dream house or passive income investment property constructed for you with modern finishes and quality care is also available. For more details on acquiring these pieces, contact us on 0762166018 or scan the QR code you see on the screen to access us on WhatsApp directly. SGK Group Saving generations through knowledge. Welcome back. We continue with the news. United Party for National Development, UPND, losing Kaludushi candidate, has called on small scale miners to give government more time concerning the Black Mountain. In an interview with Kamnet News, Mr. Kaleta Chikawa says government needs to come up with a framework that will see the small scale miners benefit from the Black Mountain. More in the following report. On the 25th of November 2021, Mines and Minerals Development Minister Poka Buswe said there will be transparency in the issuance of licenses to operate at the Black Mountain Copper Slug on the Copper Belt Province. Kabuswe added that the Black Mountain would only be given to Zambians who've applied and have licenses. The minister was responding to allegations that the government has secretly engaged a Chinese national to take over the Black Mountain. Thus said, UPND Kalulushi constituency losing candidate has called on the small-scale miners to give government time in relation to the Black Mountain. In the Black Mountain. I personally understand how the process is going because I'm on the ground and I've, I've been uh, involved in the process and uh, I can rest assure you that uh, yes, the process is taking long but personally I feel uh, the best we can do as, as a people is we need to do something different from what was being done in the past regime. The new Don government should come with new ideas that will actually uh, bring forth fruits that will benefit the country. So in the process of the Black Mountain, I will really not be glad if we see ourselves as the youth of Zambia just collecting the Black Mountain and selling it out to Chinese. No. I think what the government also needs to do, uh, this is my humble appeal to, 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 to the honorables and the, uh, the president himself. Let's have a discussion with the principal owners of that Black Mountain. Mr. Chikaba says government needs more time to come up with a framework that will see more small scale miners benefit from the Black Mountain. Of us just taking the Black Mountain which is allocated to us, which is 30%, to go and sell other Chinese guys to process and make more money. Let us have a framework where if the government can also intervene, we discuss with the same principal owners, where if these cooperatives take, I don't know if it is 10,000 tons each, 5,000 tons each, they take it there, get crushed, they get involved in the whole process of the whole tonnage that belongs to them. So that as copper now actualizes itself from the Black Mountain, it comes out as copper. Our youths and our people have a lot to benefit. Unlike we just take the, the Black Mountain, we sell it at a, at a price that we are comfortable, we can buy, we can buy mini meal and it ends there. It's not enough. We the assurance is that there is transparency about the issue of the small scale miners everywhere in the country and not just the Black Mountain. Blessings Shaquila, Camnet News. Lusaka. The Federation of Small Scale Miners Association of Zambia is optimistic that the cleaning up of the mining sector by government will secure the plight of the small scale miners. During an exclusive interview with Kamnet TV, Federation President Joseph Mwansa says the growth of the small scale miners in Zambia has been on a slow pace owing to the fact that it lacks investment and clear operation systems. 
Mr. Mwansa has since appealed to government and other stakeholders to collaborate with the miners across the country to ensure that investments benefit the local people. Then there is no implication or complication. Uh, in fact, the local miners, uh, miner, um, those who are doing small scale miners, they will be on advantage. What the government is trying to do is to facilitate the investors who should come and invest in our nation and at least to pay better than the ones which we have, the, one, the buyers that we have who are paying uh, almost nothing. So the government, they are not going to block anyone from doing some activities. What they want is just to better our market and to put the local ones on the advantage side so that uh, when you produce, at least you should find a better market than the market that we have now. So the job of the government or what the government are doing are trying to see how they can help uh, the local miners to improve uh, their sales. So they are not going to disadvantage anybody. As you know, the, the, the business of gemstone or any business, it's a free uh, market. But the government is not going to be bulldozing each and every person. They are just going to create a very good platform for Zambians, those who are mining, to find a tristy, uh, a better buyers who can buy. And I think that's what the government are doing so far. A biomedical engineer, Kenneth Mutumbisha, says there is need to motivate Zambian engineers in order for the sector to thrive to its full potential. Engineer Mutumbisha explains that engineers in Zambia have been neglected and are not given the needed financial support to contribute to national development. Zambia has been lagging behind in terms of engineering. We've been performing so poorly. And there are quite a number of reasons why Zambia has been performing so poorly. And one of the reasons is that um, the regimes of the past, or the rulers we've had, or the governments which have been leading us have never taken keen interest in the engineering industry of this country. You see, for a country to develop, you need to take engineering as a priority. Never take anything as a priority apart from engineering. All the developed countries, Russia, China, Japan, USA, Canada, name them all. They are doing so great because of taking engineering so seriously. But come to Zambia, nobody has taken engineering so seriously. It's not because we have incompetent engineers. No, we have brilliant engineers in Zambia. This is Kamla TV Main News. We'll take another break. We'll be back with international and sports news. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. For over 24 years now, we have constantly been working to ensure that we deliver products and services to communities, cities, nations, the continent, and the world at large, offering solutions in the energy sector, mining, telecommunications, health, transport, construction, cybersecurity, agriculture, and printing. Savenda has been at the core of it all in ensuring that it helps in bringing social and economic development to its loving people. We value your support, and as we look forward to the year ahead, would like to thank you for the support you have given us. The Savenda Group of Companies Board, Management and Staff would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2022. Savenda, Save Nations, Develop Africa. On Monday, 10th January 2022, on National Matters, join Pastor Moses Chilu as he hosts Tabo Kawana, Director Media at the Means of Information. What is just important is implementation. The rules and the laws are already in place. The council has the mandate. 
The Zambia police has also the mandate to enforce the law. So what is important is that there must be political will. At exactly 20.45 hours, as they discuss various national matters. Invite others to participate through phoning, on Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp and text messages. Make a debt with us. Come the TV, not just another channel. Welcome back and in international news, West African leaders will, dis will gather Sunday to discuss Mali's political crisis with a military junta submitting a new time frame for a transition back to civilian rule at the last minute after its first proposal was rejected. The extraordinary summit of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS bloc in Ghana's capital Accra, is expected to discuss possible sanctions on the Sahel state over potentially delayed elections among other issues. Meanwhile, at least 21 people have died after heavy snow trapped them in their vehicles as tens of thousands of visitors thronged Pakistani's resort town of Mori. Here's a roundup of this and other stories beyond our borders. Malians on Saturday protested against the military regime who are proposing a prolongation of their rule before handing over power to civilian rule. The protesters are against the proposal to prolong the regime to five more years at the helm of power. We feel that there is no better place to remind all Malians of the importance of democracy, that the matters monument where we stand today. It is not conceivable that a regime of exception will last forever. It is up to our authorities to show responsibility so as not to pull the rope too hard and cause a breakdown in the dialogue with the community of West African state, ECOWAS. The protesters are calling for the respect of the law, democracy, and the return of rule to the civilian-led government. We are here for a successful transition. Yes, we are here for a short transition. We are for a transition that avoids international sanctions for Mali, a transition that can last up to six years. It is not a transition, but a presidential mandate. The protest took place even as the West African leaders gathered Sunday to discuss Mali's political crisis with the military junta submitting a new time frame for a transition back to civilian rule. Mourners line the streets in Islamabad as ambulances carrying the bodies of eight members of the same family drive past. Friends of Naveed Iqbal are in shock. They say the police officer and his family were well-liked members of the community. I still can't believe it, even after I heard about this tragic incident. The whole country is grieving along with the family. Navid Iqbal was a very nice person. This is a calamitous day. Temperatures fell to minus 8 degrees Celsius overnight on Friday in the mountain town of Murray, around 30 kilometers northeast of Islamabad. Thousands of people had traveled to the resort to see the unusually heavy snow, ignoring extreme weather warnings. Some reportedly died of hypothermia after being trapped in their vehicles overnight. Witnesses say others were crushed by falling trees. Some tourists died in cars, trees fell on the cars and caused their deaths. I'm just back from the area. The army is doing rescue work, but the highway police and the army will have to spend another day completing the rescue work. The traffic jams are bad. The military has been called in to help rescue thousands of people who are still stranded, but bad weather is making their job difficult. Pakistan's interior minister arrived in Murray on Saturday to see the rescue operation for himself. He promised that everyone still stranded would be rescued soon. All government rest houses have opened on the instructions of the chief minister of Punjab. We are starting a helicopter service as soon as the weather clears, but still the weather is bad. If some people are stranded in forests, we will rescue them. Prime Minister Imran Khan says he is shocked and upset. He's ordered an inquiry and is promising to introduce new regulations to prevent a tragedy like this happening again. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. It's now time for sports news. In sports news, countries will be required to play a match if they have a minimum of 11 players 
who have tested negative while in the absence of a goalkeeper. An outfield player from the team must replace the goalkeeper. Any country that does not have a minimum of 11 players available will be considered to have lost the match by two goals to nil. Organizers have also outlined that each team will be permitted to use a maximum of five substitutes with a maximum of three opportunities to, to make substitutions during the game. Where extra time is, is played, teams will each be allowed one additional substitution and will have one additional substitution opportunity. Algeria are the reigning champions after a one nil final victory over Senegal when the competition was, left, was last held in Egypt in 2019. Meanwhile, Cameroon has won the opening match of the Africa Cup of Nations 2021, beating Burkina Faso by two goals to one. Cameroon is hosting the tournament. On that sporting note, we've come to the end of the news, but let's take a look at the headlines once again. The cost of water to go up as Zambia moves towards price reflective tariffs. And the PF defends its failure to acquire an IMF package. More people continue to condemn the UPP for withdrawing from the Kabwata by election. In international news, at least 21 dead as heavy snow traps people in cars. And in sports news, Africa Cup of Nations matches to go ahead if teams have 11 players. The Cabinet World Verse of the Day is coming from the book of Luke 9, verse 23 to 24. Then he said to them, Oh, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. On that note, we come to the end of the news. Thank you for watching. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Bye-bye.